Hello, again. Uh, damn. <laughs> Not a good way to start. Okay, here we go. Uh, one of my uh, followers on my video, subscribers, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, he commented on my one of my videos, uh, how to check compression without taking the engine apart, without pull start, uh, without any of that stuff. How would you check compression? Uh, the simple answer is flywheel. You, uh, you turn the flywheel over. I have four engines here and a duplicate of one of these engines in a vehicle. So I'm going to show the, the one in the vehicle actually has a little bit more compression than the one in the vehicle is just like this. It's a HPI uh, Nitro Star 15. Uh, and then we have a Traxxas 2.5, an Axial 32, RR1, and an OS18 CVR. So, Basically, what you're going to want to do with if you have the engine out of your vehicle, all you do is turn the crankshaft over, and when you're looking at the front of the engine, spin it counterclockwise because that's the way engines spin. So, that's how you do that. This one, as you can see, very easy to turn over. I'm having no problem turning it over at all, but. It actually sounds like it has decent compression. I could probably run this, probably get it running, but it would run like crap. Next. The same engine, but in a vehicle. If it's in a vehicle, you're down here. You want to spin it in a counterclockwise direction. So, push towards this way. If it's on this side, push this way. But, you just push it. And see if there's any resistance. And this one actually has a little more compression than the other uh, motor. So this one I've actually got running, but with the fuel that I use, uh, this doesn't have a low speed needle. So it gets hot very quick. Uh, so I'm just going to change the carb out. It's not that hard. Uh, I think Dynamite makes the carb. Uh, that you can just put in place. All you gotta do is uh, drill holes on both sides because that's with these older motors, you can actually see there's a hole on each side that holds the carburetor in place. And plus, there's a seal on top so there's no air leak. If there's an air leak, you're gonna have a lean condition and you're never gonna get it to run right. Traxxas 2.5. Uh, this would be the same with a 3.3, a Pro 15, whatever. This one, uh, you can see when I get right here, it stops for a second. It doesn't stop completely, but there's some resistance. And if I hold it up to the camera, you can actually hear some hissing coming out of the exhaust port. And that is the air going by the, uh, the piston and the sleeve. So yeah, that, this one still has good compression. This has has had less than a gallon put through it. This OS18 CVR. Same thing again. Just spin it over. If you encounter any type of resistance, it still has good compression. With brand new motors, if you go into a hobby shop, and you try to turn over a, a motor. I, it's hard for me to do it with this one because there's no flywheel on it. That will give me more uh, leverage. But basically right now the pinch is so tight that uh, the sleeve sort of get, I mean the piston sort of gets stuck in the sleeve. Uh, I could reduce some of this some this is one thing you can always do to get a motor with a lot of compression started loosen the glow plug for a second and then you can get it 
turned over, or at least try. Of course. But you can hear with that one, it's much louder compared to that one. This has very good compression. It's never been ran, but it has oil after run oil in it. You see, now I can actually turn it over by hand a little. It's very hard, but that's because it hasn't even been broke in. Uh, I'm not going to run this. This is a brand new short block. That's brand new short block means a uh, brand new case, crankcase, crankshaft, sleeve, piston, connecting rod. Basically everything, the short, the like with the regular engine, the short block, the, the pistons and the block, and the crankshaft. Um, with my new OS, I haven't even ran these yet. It's too cold right now. Uh, honestly, it's not too cold for the uh, vehicles. It's too cold for me. But these still have excellent compression. But if you ever encounter a vehicle where you can't really get to it from the bottom, like on a T-Max, just go at it from the top. And that's what I have to do with T-Max. And when you're done running a nitro, always drop the piston to uh, bottom dead center. You want to drop it to bottom dead center so everything can contract uh, and you won't leave, lose your pinch. Uh, there is a company that will re-pinch your uh, sleeves. I can't remember the name of them right now. I'll have to ask my friend because he's actually got several of his engines re-pinched. And all that does is bring back the compression. Uh, compression is basically uh, the piston has worn against the sleeve for so long that the tolerances that used to be there aren't there anymore. So the air to, can just slide right by the piston creating no compression. Sometimes you can get a, v, a uh, motor with really low compression running, but it'll run like crap. You won't get the best power. You won't get the high-end speeds that you want. Uh, and lastly, another way you can do it, if you have the engine apart, is take the piston and put it up through the bottom of the cylinder and push up on the connecting rod. If it doesn't come up to the top, you have great compression, especially if you push. If it comes up to the top, you're getting to the point where you're going to need uh, a new piston and a new sleeve or get your sleeve repinched. Personally, I like to just buy new, but it's cheaper. And you can actually, I can actually tell by looking at this uh, piston, it has, uh, it's been polished due to the constant up and down motion that these vehicles, that these engines do. That's why I love nitro compared to electric. Uh, I traded one of my electrics today and I have a Jado 3.3 coming and a Kyosho Inferno MP 7.5 Kanai Edition 3 coming. Uh, it was a championship buggy back in the uh, mid 2000s. In the early 2000s, like 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. It was a really good buggy. Uh, and I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Kanai won the World Championships with that buggy. Uh, it's lost quite a bit of its compression, so I either put a new motor in it, or uh, I can get, if I can find a new piston in the sleeve, do that, or get the sleeve repinched if I can't find a new piston in the sleeve. That's... Getting it pinched is sort of a last-ditch effort if you can't find a new piston and a sleeve or a cheap way. It's like $35, I believe, to have your engine repinched, and you have to send him your your sleeve and your piston so he can pinch it and not go too far. And I can't remember the name, the guy's name. But yeah, that's all you do with that. I'm gonna tighten this back up now, so. When I go to start it, this has a roto start, so it won't be hard to start this at all. I like roto start, and I actually found out here recently that Losi makes a uh, 
a starter that has a roto start in the center and a pull start, both in uh, two and one. And I've also heard that they don't last that long. Uh, you have two starting mechanisms in one. So, personally, I like bump starts with a pull start on it as well. I can start with a bump start to get it started quickly instead of having getting blisters on my fingers. Because sometimes if it's cold, you can use a hair dryer to heat up a hair dryer or heat gun to heat up the motor. And uh, that sucks. Uh, you can to heat up the motor, and that will make it fire faster. But you can also just continue pulling at the pull start until it. And you can see here when I pull at this pull start, the whole table moves. Uh, where did that other one go? With this one, I can do the same thing. The table barely moves. Ah, glow plug. And you gotta remember, you have to have compression because that's how these work. Uh, glow plugs inside of them. Uh, what did I just do with that one? Uh, glow plug, there's a coil inside made out of usually platinum or iridium, and it's what's known as a catalyst. Uh, the uh, fuel uh, has a uh, what's known as, well, not known as, uh, it has a chemical reaction with the methanol, causing the glow plug to stay burning, and also the continued explosions keeps the glow plug coil burning, and that's how they continue running with vehicles that have catalytic converters. Inside a catalytic converter, you have a catalyst. Once they get hot, the fuel comes through it, the extra fuel in the exhaust comes through, and the extreme heat of the catalytic converter burns off the extra fuel. So you don't pollute into the atmosphere. That's how catalytic converters came about in the 1970s. Uh, when they first came out, they didn't put any kind of heat shield and if you were to park over and if it was a low low vehicle or it was really high grass or brush or something and it was dry it would actually catch it on fire because they get so hot just like a glow plug they get hot and also with glow plugs you have many different temperature ranges uh you have from cold to turbo so and with each engine, you're going to have to choose and look at what the manufacturer specifies. You can get a uh, glow plug uh, turbo heads where you can run a turbo plug in it. But most of the time, you're going to be running, a lot, especially with big blocks, you're going to be running a, a cold plug. It's not cold. It's just compared to the temperature with other uh, plugs, they're a little hotter. So, yeah, that's how you check compression. Just turn the flywheel over if you get a new vehicle. And uh, if you just walk into a hobby shop and you want to see if has this ever been ran, has this hobby shop owner ever taken this out and had some fun with it, put your finger up under it and uh, turn that flywheel over. If that flywheel turns over relatively easy, I mean, not... Not really easy, but it doesn't stop like it did with this one. This one has never been ran, ever. Uh, and that probably shows that the hobby shop owner has used that one, asked for one in a box that has never been uh, opened. Usually that's what they'll do, but if they have one, they only have one and it's on the shelf, you may want to think about buying online. Unless... A lot of the vehicles I have can't be bought online anymore. A lot of the uh, HPIs I have, you can't buy anymore. Most of them. Uh, the RS4 Sport 3 Flux. You can find them sometimes on eBay. The RS4 uh, Sport 3 Drift. Uh, a The one I have is the Fawn Gittin Jr. But there's also the Hoonigan. Uh, they're coming out one. I think it's a uh, uh, RS4 Sport 3 Drift Flux. So it's a drift car that comes with a brushless motor already. Uh, with mine, I actually put in... Altogether, I put in about $800 into it. Uh, 
And except for the fact that it's an HPI RS4 Sport 3, uh, I actually compete with it and have won. It's all wheel drive. I'm looking at uh, a Sakura or something along those lines. I want to get a kit because kits are where the competition really is. Uh, when you put it together with the parts you want, the electronics or the motor you want, that's where you're really going to get it like the tamaya vehicle that i got yes it came with this motor i've already gone over that i ended up putting my os30 in it it is a beast i need new tires for it but that's another story so that's how you check compression thanks for watching